and you're going to have like 10,000 cringe moments and <laughs> it's not worth the... Yeah, worth the whole concept was a bit... A bit fun. I smell that a mile away now. And I've never broken... The only time I ever break my film equipment, cameras and whatever, is on those sets where they're dead cheap and you're in a rush and you like drop a lens or mm -hmm. fasten a tripod or do something stupid and... Like then there's no there's no professional setting. It's not a professional setting to operate in. I just don't think it's it's never fun if nothing is planned. Yeah, in a way, you know. Yeah, and you think and you think that I mean our role is if we're movie makers is to make some take something that costs a hundred grand and make it look like a million. You know, that's you're worth nine hundred grand. Your talent is because that's what you do. And and when you've got nothing <laughs> and you didn't make something happen, you can, but then also you've got just life stuff that you've got to handle. I think I you know, in regards to kind of money and budgets and all that kind of stuff, I think it's there's always gonna be a difficulty because if you know, per se, if we were to make the perfect living off it, it, it would might be fruitful. Mm. But it, it's that constant hustle and mm. you know, if I kinda maybe like you know, like your idea or like what's going on and maybe a thousand dollars is enough to go with and you create yeah. something cool but if it's uh, not really that kind of relationship you're just kind of going like yeah. uh, I'm just another you make it happen Johnny you make it Wes you know what to do you make it yes yeah. yes, I think so yeah I choose the three P's now so project people price so I'm happy to do something for just one P it's mm -hmm. usually not that fun though so like if it's a shit ton of money, like, you know, I'll be like, ah, oh, that gives me a couple of free spins at the wheel down the track, I'll take it. But like, you're looking for like cool people, friends, you know, you guys, you kind of people, or the project itself is like a sci-fi or something that you really want to do. Then yeah, that's moving interest. Yes. If you can get two Ps, like these days, I'm trying to, I'm usually jagging two Ps, but it's, you it's want it. the same for, uh, philosophy for me, you know? Yeah. It's just people, connection, networking. Yeah. Uh, learning a new challenge. Yeah. Uh, which, you know, can challenge you. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's money. Yeah. I mean, you can't argue with money, especially when you're creative and you want to do your own stuff, because at our heart, it would just love to be left alone probably and just keep creating, right? That's the whole point. Just It's, it's kind of like having that idealistic lifestyle where yeah. you know, you're just interacting with those ideas that keep on building you, but it's, yeah. it doesn't always necessarily continuously happen. Yeah. And I think you can get too safe. If you look, um, if, I think that's when Metallica went off the boil, when as soon as they start making mu millions, their music kind of shit. They're not angry anymore. They've sort of like got no life dress. It comes to business yeah. and, and the creativity or the lifestyle and all that kind of stuff isn't really it. And I think that's for both of us really and, and yeah. a lot of these creatives is that it's, yeah, it's, um, then you have to turn into a brand or a business and mm. I never really kind of want to do that entirely. You know, yeah. I just want to interact with the right people and, yeah. you know, and, and grow your skills and grow together. Yeah, there. absolutely. And so, when did you? Because you were part of a super group in TAFE that came through. There was about two or three years in TAFE that was just so. It was a year above the super group. No, you were in the you, Johnny Sullivan was in your year. Oh, does it? That, yeah, we're, there's tons of killers. Kind of a super group. There was like a patch of two or three. I don't know if it was just great lecturers or great talent or whatever, or it was the '90s or whatever, like 2000s. I think one thing was like the education at TAFE was really kind of good, like, and I think we still had to shoot on film. Yeah, at the time, so and we also paid like two thousand for our course and got like a ten k film to work on, like mm. five of them really. But I think the practical skills that that they kind of taught us was really good for a, a lot of the kind of relationships that are still going on today. Yeah, yeah. So I remember you, I went to the screening of your film. It was at FTI or something. I think. And there was it was there was a sort of a skateboard one with scratched up eight mil. Yes, that's yeah. That was uh, when they were doing like the short films at FTI or something like that. Yeah, yeah, that was cool. And then I remember there was like one with uh, Igor Sass, and he was like yes. a happy character or something. Yes, he was. Uh, that was uh, something George's Technicolor Dream. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that it's was fun. cool. That was cool. That was a really cool film. It's actually a kind of a weird year for films because I think. Um, it was the first year that allowed uh, the writers to be directors, which is, <laughs> we all know, it can be quite dangerous, but we all kind of executed our films. Yeah. Um, but I think after that year, they wouldn't really allow that anymore because it's quite a dangerous thing. Yeah, you, especially when you're early career, you get the sort of the dictatorship feeling, mm. sense of, you know, this is my vision and no one can contribute. But I, I always kind of think as, you know, like, I mean, obviously... 
you do need a writer and a director, but sometimes when you're kind of on the shoestring budget and gung ho and you, you kind of want to do something, yeah, you know, uh, even like the TAFE or EPs and they wanted to control elements of how you do things or, you know, really put it in line. Yeah. Um, yeah, you kind of like that idea, you know, that you're the person that gets communicated to and you communicate to everyone else what you want to do. But yeah, yeah there's so many layers in, in the industry yeah. that you have to work through. And also just different personalities. Like you look, I I mean, I must have been a nightmare. My first film, writer, director, then I'm like first year at uni. Mm-hmm. And then when I lectured at uni or like tutored um, 90 student films would come in every semester. So I see 180 three minute short films a year from a first time director, writer, director. And I just think, holy shit, if I was like, there's people, you know, group dynamics falling, debt breaking down, you just got to go like, the stakes are nothing, just experiment at this point. Mm-hmm. Like, you're not, you go, everyone thinks they're Tarantino, like, it's crazy. Well, that's the thing, anyone could be a content career these days, and it? Yeah. And a lot of things are broken and bad edits don't matter, and it's, but it's a, it's a constant scroll that always appears in your screen and yeah you kind of forgive a lot of the stuff that we we kind of know as aesthetic to film and it kind of breaks the barriers but you know after a few like i don't like this you just it's there anyone can create how do you feel about that stuff like the i think the i guess like for us to be creators or want to be an artist is to always want to have that ideal that you can create stuff and but now anyone, everyone wants, and we all wanted to be that person. We wanted to be kind of infamous or famous for doing that thing. Now it's kind of saturated with anyone can yeah. uh, have that personality or it's kind of like a really side thing. And, um, you know, I, I don't listen to radio for the pure fact that I don't like the ads that kind of tell me what to do. Yeah, And I think the social <laughs> media idea is kind of like you know like this is how awesome yeah. i am how i could be so you know yeah follow us and it kind of washes what we kind of understand as you know mm-hmm. content creators it's a mirror industry and it's like everybody's reflecting their own reflection out over broadcasting it but even ones where it's like people going on you know doing wondrous trips through iceland or something like that it's always them holding a selfie stick looking at one to the wonder like, what the fuck happened to just being able to you know, it was like in the 90s, you ride your bike, you see something. If the person wasn't there, they didn't get to see it. <laughs> like, you know, and there's a sort of a magic for just looking out into the world as opposed to looking at yourself in the world. Exactly. It's kind of like when we were young, I guess, we we started having internet. We were talking MIRC. It's kind of a bit <laughs> yeah. distant, you know, like, but I still kind of don't. There's a curiosity of like, what is he doing until you kind of come and yeah. you might show me a photograph. Like, you know, like, this is what I did. But now I expect. You know, you, anyone could expect you or I to be watching your stories and go, oh, look at your progression and yeah. this is how I see life and all that kind of stuff. And yeah, it's it's a t- totally different thing. It's, yeah. It's, Let's like it or lump it, it's here. It's here. Uh, I, I just don't, I'm always really cautious about putting myself out there in that way. Yeah. Especially with AI and all that kind of stuff. Like, right. it's kind of like, oh, well, like there's that Im- image of you gone, like, you know, like as in, or all, all out there. Yeah. So it's... it's And the internet never forgets. And never forget. Yeah. That's scares. That's kind of scary at the same time. But what I guess that's the fun thing about influencers and all this bullshit. You know, especially the ones like doing stupid stuff. Instagram influencers in the wild, I think I follow on Instagram. You're like, dude, that's going to... That video is going to be there forever. At <laughs> some point, you're probably going to regret that. Is something learning something about you and like, yeah. you as a that thing. and Yeah. I think as a distribution model, though, we need to pay attention to it because I don't think kids watch like, you know, they're not discovering movies through the video store like we used to. Mm -hmm. And this has been on my mind a lot lately. So I think I might have mentioned a couple of times, but like, yeah, I just think browsing the video store, you know, the magic of that. Remember that? Mm -hmm. Like, Jesus Christ, that was so much fun. Mm -hmm. And you really worshipped your selections. Um, Now it just seems to be too much of everything, too short to, you know, throw away. Now, well, it's the short stuff is the the one that get all the attention, right? Mm. The the double the double visits and when you yeah. trying to scroll through, yeah, because it feeds the algorithm, it feeds the algorithm. Yeah, but that we're not necessarily into putting. There's no you know there's no magic getting fed into the algorithm. It's just straight of gamifying what works. Seven seconds with text on it, bang 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 bang. Mm-hmm. Like yeah, what were some of the influences? How did you get into film? You know, what was did you watch movies growing up? And you went fuck yeah. 
Well, I did have always a interest, but I, I wasn't really creative when I was young. I, you know, did, you know, worked at a warehouse and all that kind of stuff. I kind of looked up, you know, TAFE one day and saw film and TV and I started studying it and it blew my mind. And this is like 26 years old. Yeah. So it was, I, I was never really taught to be creative or be an artist or anything like that. I was quite, quite kind of, uh, wasn't, wasn't born to or taught to. Um, and when I studied film and TV, I kind of discovered like so many things I could be creative. I could be a leader. Uh, I could be like all these things that like was within my personality that could have been suppressed. And that gave me the, 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 the light, the opportunity of to learn something new, something mundane. My parents or my dad really just always kind of never really approved of like, you know, me choosing a creative field. Um, but it, it, you know, I promised him uh, it, it one day it might make money. <laughs> you, probably, you couldn't have known that. <laughs> you know, and, um, and yeah, that was the full discovery of, it was quite late in my life, but it was the full discovery of, you know, something that I could really like to sink my teeth to, you know. Yeah. I was very naive at it. I mean, I studied TAFE at 2006 for a year. I think it was set three and set four. And then I thought I was, I, I thought I was a great director, you know, just one year of film school and I decided to start my own production company. Uh, but it was two years later of like, you know, videography jobs and not really knowing how to ask to be paid and <laughs> doing shit for literally just engagement and for free. And I just went back to TAFE and uh, studied another two years. Yeah. Um, but I was fascinated with the world of, you know, of I think the job's are always fun when you don't you the everything changes all the time. Yeah. The role or what you see and all that kind of stuff. So I think that was the true obsession of really loving the film and, and interacting with more different people and yeah. what can you do technically. Yeah. There's a lot of sellers that they take from this industry that you can never finish. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like a lot of jobs are kinda of like hanging out for sixty, well whatever, when they can retire and just go fishing or something like that. But I'm like, man, I got more ideas left in my ideas book than I have years on this planet. Like shit, I'm never going to be able to do that. I got to like move. You just, keep going. Good... You just got to keep going. Like, yeah. You're doing and um, yeah. I mean, for uh, like knowing you and you're quite entrepreneurial in what you've always done and you know, which is why we like each other, I guess. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's, it's like now I kind of achieved that kind of goal. So what's the next kind yeah. of goal that isn't under my belt or, yeah. What skill or what haven't I not seen or what people that were not worked with? Like it's I think the less glamorous word for entrepreneur is just cockroachy. Cockroachy. Like, fuck man, hard to kill. That's the key secret, right? Like you can you can stop me like now. Oh yeah, I, I think it like I, I I don't think we can live a life uh just having the same thing in the routine and no, no, uh, it, I tried it. Yeah, I'm I'm living it now. Uh <laughs> I, I did a major change. I mean I not living at the studio anymore. Finally got a normal house. Yeah. Um, only down the road from the studio. It looked, yeah. Uh, but it's kind of like wake you up every morning at that time and um, go on finishing work. And it, it, it's just, and before my lifestyle, it could be anywhere. Yeah. Could be anywhere. And the, doing the routine thing starts really irking at me, but it, it, it does help. Yeah. With what, what you all the many things that I have created. Yeah, work-life separation is really important. It doesn't, because it can be consuming this thing, all consuming 24 hours. Yeah, I I mean, everyone has, I mean, I've operated that, uh, the couple of businesses for 10 years now and I, I've kind of been, I've kind of had to accept that fact that work-life separation is important because I don't think I can get the, uh, be the person I am today you know, not sleeping where you work, yeah, and and just kind of continuously working, yeah. Um, but it has been a huge shock to kind of have you know have that separation and yeah. sit down, and you really want to do a lot of things in my work. If I was at the studio, you just get the fuck up and do shit, yeah. But when you kind of separate, you you start. There was a lot of differences in my life, like. It's like a, a lot of effort to do shit. Start procrastinating a lot more. You're chilling out, and I, I, it's I don't entirely like it. 
Yeah, I'm with you actually, and and I think I don't spend that much time at home. Mm-hmm. You know, like I kind of sometimes. 